the basic thing is we are going to connect with something that we take for granted. We have taken vitamin D for granted and uh, it's a big price we are paying actually on our health. Vitamin D has been or let us say the sun which is the actual original source of vitamin D has always been revered you know from time memorial in all cultures in all traditions and if you ask me I think it is a visible form of God because without sun there is nothing the entire cosmos the planets they are all moving around it in a very orderly manner it's a source of life energy and plus vitamin D at the same time see how in India we also recognize sun salutations you are sitting in a yoga center where we have your Surya Namaskars going on every day so the point is that there is so much we are getting from the sun in terms of good health so this was the time many years back where man was basically a farmer right and our lifestyle was actually an outdoor lifestyle so we had enough exposure to God's sun and vitamin D was naturally being made in the body right then even our children we were more uh, you know these things were very common although they are there today but not to that degree as before we would oil the babies uh, give them a nice massage and then leave them in the open sunlight because this was a method of getting the vitamin D through the sun uh, through the skin to them they would play like that in the open sun and even I remember myself as children, we were outdoor children, right? So life was so different that time, but see what has happened today. We like to cover ourselves because we are living in a time of sun phobia. We are scared of the sun. We think, are bap re, ek second, and my skin is going to get burnt off, I'm going to get this problem, that problem. So we try to cover ourselves to the fullest we hardly see the faces nowadays huh? and that's why there's a nice industry that is booming which is sunscreens it's a very big industry so to sort of chemically protect the skin from the bad rays of the sun so sun is good but because we human beings in this time of industrialization have tampered with nature all the protective layers of the environment are gone we know all that so the sun rays are good and bad no doubt about it so we don't want to get the harmful effect of the bad rays but in that process we are preventing exposure to the good rays of the sun. I mean this is the reality of today, isn't it? And our kids you can see are all indoor personalities. Hmm? No kabaddi, no koko, no lagori, nothing. We are all playing the games sitting in closed rooms. Our offices are closed, our cars are closed. So we just do not get that exposure which our farming ancestors used to get. They could take vitamin D for granted because they were exposed. We are not exposed to the sun, you know, the way they were. So the question today arises is, are we getting enough sunlight or are we getting enough vitamin D? And that's why we are sitting here. The answer is a big no because vitamin D deficiency Today is a pandemic. Pandemic means it's everywhere in all countries, not just the North Pole and the South Pole, but even the countries which are on the equator. Tropical, tropical country. India is a tropical country. The first thing we say, hey, uh -huh, we don't have uh, vitamin D deficiency. We are in a sunny uh, place, but it's not so. In India also, more than 90% of population is low in vitamin D. And the statistics are very, very alarming. I mean, we can never, till you don't check it, you will not realize that where you actually stand. So you look at every place, even villages, even big cities, we are seeing this big pandemic of vitamin D deficiency. Not just the, uh, what should I say, uh, pregnant women, lactating women, but elderly people. Look at the 83%, adults 91%. Adolescent, short, young bache, 95% of them are low in vitamin D. Infants, last one, see, less than three months, 80% are low in vitamin D. So, how is it affecting our health? We'll see. This is another one to show that infants, infants means who are less than one year of age, 
even in India, yeah, the vitamin D deficiency in infants is 80 to 90 percent. It's alarming. It's actually very alarming. Then they did a study on medical people, people who are in the medical field. Me, you, I mean, so many of us are there. And again, more than 80 percent of the medical personnel are also low in vitamin D, which is shocking, which is alarming. Okay, let's forget India. Let's move on to the hottest countries, huh? Dubai, Middle East, huh? all these Middle Eastern countries. Even there, the vitamin D deficiency is above 80 percent. Of course, they do wear the traditional dresses which are keeping them covered and practically we are also living the same lifestyle here because we are very scared of the sun. So this is one side of the picture that there is vitamin D deficiency globally and there is another side of the picture we are getting to know the benefits of vitamin D. We thought that vitamin D was only for keeping our bones healthy. This was our traditional medical education also that you need vitamin D to prevent rickets, osteomalacia, so vitamin D, right? But now we are realizing there's more and more coming up, which is pretty alarming, that vitamin D reduces the risk of flu. Can you please shut it off? Huh? Flu, common cold, cancer, vague muscle aches and pains in the body. It's very important for the health of the heart to prevent diabetes. Can you imagine that? Depression. Do you know how much money people spend on buying antidepressants? And they have tons and tons of side effects. It's very easy for us doctors to prescribe an antidepressant. But they are sold across the counter also in many other countries. Thankfully, now in India, we are having a better control on that, you know, because then the people abuse it. So, vitamin D deficiency, magnesium, it can take care of depression very easily. It's about just correcting our deficiencies in the body, right? Autoimmune diseases, that's what I'm focusing on these last few years. It's a very uh, scary part of medicine. You know, I remember when we were doctors and even now after almost 28 years of being in medicine, any patient with autoimmune disease, oh, bapre, internally, what to do, what to do? Because the medicines that we have in our hands are symptomatic, and they suppress the symptoms. But there is no root cause therapy in our traditional system, conventional system of medicine to deal with these problems. And they are really rising. So people just go to the doctor where it's manifesting. For example, a psoriatic will go to a dermatologist. A person with rheumatoid arthritis will go to a rheumatologist. But the cause is somewhere deep inside. There's a common cause which we don't typically target with our medical system. So autoimmune diseases. So vitamin D is needed for so many things. So rickets that we thought is the only prevention we want to do with vitamin D is actually tip of an iceberg. And look at the balance 7 eighth of the iceberg which is submerged in the sea. What all diseases can be prevented with adequate levels of vitamin D in the body? including dental caries. In fact, I have a couple of dentist friends. I've to, I told them, hey guys, you should check the vitamin D of all your patients. Make it okay. So trust me, you can really improve dental health of the people. Type 1 diabetes, children, poor children, taking 3-3 three, three insulin shots every day when they get type 1 diabetes. So the point is, the <clears throat> list is expanding and we are all heading towards deficiency of vitamin D. In fact, now they are saying that vitamin D is the biggest medical condition, the biggest medical problem in the world today. And it's high time it's given due importance. We have taken it for granted because it's a vitamin. And we never realized that vitamin could be medicine. So honestly, today's my talk will be in two sections. Huh? In the first section, my aim is that what we can do to maintain healthy levels and prevent problems. And the second part will be the therapeutic part of vitamin D means how it can be used to treat problems, which is very fascinating to me. I have learned it in the last four years. It was never taught to me in medical school, right?